Are you a sculptor? No? Do you want to be? Well, check this out. Hey everyone, so this is AMR Academy and as you can see, I've moved. I'm not in my little office. Um, so the reason I've moved, um, this is actually a sculpting video. So writing ones will be in my little office, which is upstairs. Sculpting ones, I'm in the kitchen. Kitchen table, I'm in the kitchen. So it is Saturday the 6th of June today uh, and I've done a few writing videos so far um, and I actually thought it's a kind of about time I do a, a sculpture one. So I will actually cover some of the sculptures, obviously, as you will probably see that I do um, as the kind of channel grows. But for now, I wanted to do a bit of an introductory as to kind of how I do my sculptures. Um, there's a million and one different, obviously, kind of sculpture channels and things out there and people have different styles. Um, I'll run through kind of the kind of different types of medium I use and the kind of techniques I use to kind of bring my creations to life. So I thought in this video what I'd probably do is just kind of run through the types of stuff I use, how I put it all together, and then as I say, um, after this video you'll probably see me obviously then doing some kind of actual sculpting and see it all kind of come together. So do bear with, but I'll run through quickly just kind of the stuff I tend to use. So it might be stuff you then want to uh, kind of go out and purchase yourself. Uh, I'm not big enough yet to kind of have any kind of affiliation with any kind of products or, you know, uh, big companies. So this is just the stuff I kind of buy. Um, and to be fair, a point I'll make now is um, I try and some of the stuff like the clay I'll talk about in a minute, I do have to buy because that's just, you know, it's the stuff that you need. But where I can, I try and recycle stuff. I try and find stuff to use within the sculptures. Um, and I will cover that in a little bit more detail. Anyway. Let's get started. So, first and foremost, with any kind of piece of art, sculpture, or anything like that, whether it be illustration, it doesn't matter. This is about sculptures, but with any piece of art, I always say, start with the basics. And the basics for me are getting a piece of paper and scribbling down your idea, okay? So literally, first thing I do, bit of paper, and I literally just, you know, jot down what, what I'm thinking of doing. I might have an idea in my head of a concept, so I'll literally play around with it, scribble and scroll, literally all over the piece of paper. And then what I tend to do is I have one of these. So it's almost like a little document stand that you'd have next to your computer maybe. What I'll tend to do is I'll, I'll actually set up that like that. So I've got my kind of sketch there. And when I'm actually then sculpting and modeling and making it, I can use that as a good reference and I kind of keep coming back to that. And it depends how far you want to go with it. You could leave it in kind of sketch form or sometimes you might want to do a full render of the actual finished thing and like you might want to use, you know, digital art packages, you know, Photoshop and things like that to actually do a bit more of a kind of finalized concept uh, and then work from that. It's however you want to do it, but I tend to kind of keep it quite loose uh, so that, you know, you can kind of then adapt as you actually start putting it together in almost a physical form. So number one, sketching the stuff out, that's what I do. Okay. Once you've got your sketch down and you're happy with it, the next thing to do is basically make your kind of maquette, almost the skeleton of the um, of the actual sculpt. Uh, and the way we actually do this uh, is we use kind of, well, I tend to use wire. Uh, I use foil as well. So just normal kind of domestic kind of kitchen foil and things like that. Uh, and that's almost a kind of the wire acts as the bones, the foil acts as the muscle, and then your clay, which you'll put on over the top, is almost like your skin layer, if that's kind of a good analogy. So what I did, and to be fair, I'm quite new to this. Um, I did a sculpt, uh, I'll point there. So this sculpture, um, basically I did him, uh, so he's a character from my second book, and it was the first sculpt I'd done using this particular clay. Um, and I basically watched some YouTube videos myself and kind of saw different kind of artists and sculptors doing different types of stuff. And I looked at, there's loads of different clays out there that you can buy and use. And I kind of set my, I, you know, my, I suppose, eye on this particular type because I'd seen it was very kind of well used throughout the uh, kind of the sculpting world. Uh, and I just bought some, you know. Uh, so I bought, bought a pack of that and I bought a few of the bits and bobs. Um, so coming back to the wire, which is something I did actually buy. So I wasn't sure kind of what type of wire to use. 
So there are some good packages like on Amazon and things like that. So I went for a bit of a mix. So I've got this kind of quite, you know, heavy, you know, thick, I think it's probably about three or four mil thick wire. And it is very flexible, okay? So you can bend it really, really easily. Um, so there's the thicker stuff, there's like a, midi, a medium grade, and then there's actually like a more fine stuff. Okay, so there's three different grades I got there and it was relatively cheap, you know, not a lot, a few pounds, a few dollars to you guys in America. Uh, but basically just bought a few bits of that. And again, it was purely just to kind of experiment, I suppose. So, you know, got a few of those. Obviously, if you're gonna be chopping wire, you need some snips. So you can get these again. To be fair, on the thinner stuff, certainly, uh, you know, a heavy duty pair of scissors would probably do it, but wire snips are actually a really handy tool to have anyway. And again, you know, you can pick these up quite cheap. This is a pretty decent, big, decent pair that I use. But again, just, you know, very valuable for stuff like this. So I use those to kind of chop the wire down. And what you can kind of do, as you can see here, is so easy and flexible, is basically you can bend this into any shape really easily, um, as I say, and, and work with it. Um, so this kind of acts as your skeleton for if you build it, you know, if you, you might be doing a, a sculpt of a person, or you might be doing it of a spaceship, you know, it doesn't matter, but it gives you that kind of foundation and that kind of, I suppose, that skeleton which gives it that kind of rigidity and makes it so it won't just kind of flop in it on itself. So it, it acts as almost like the struts that act as the foundation for the actual rest of it, so it supports it all. Um, now you've got your skeleton done, imagine. Uh, you, you basically want to pad it out and you don't want to use clay for this. You could use clay, but that then would be quite a costly thing because the clay can be actually quite costly. So the way to do it is pad it out with stuff. And to be fair, foil's great. It's very kind of, you know, adaptable. You can mold it into the shapes you want anyway. Um, and then you just put your clay on the outside of that. You don't have to use foil. Loads of other stuff. I've seen people using kind of like this dense foam and just shaping that and carving that, um, as well as various other different types of stuff. But see what works for you. So I literally just use kitchen foil. Okay, so kitchen foil very cheap to buy, supermarkets, places like that, you know, so pick it up and again, just sculpt it, you know. And one thing to use again, like I was saying about the recycling thing, so whenever you have sandwiches, whenever you cover foil, maybe on a dish that you might use, save the foil because, you know, it's a case of, you're recycling for a start, but it means that it's not going just in the bin or in the recycling, just literally that can then be used to kind of beef out your sculpt and then you put your clay over the top. So keep it, you know, I'm forever um, basically telling my wife and kids, you know, if you've got any foil, save it and chuck it in, you know, chuck it in daddy's box of like little bits so I can keep it for my sculptures. So they do that now. And as I say, it's really useful. So keep your foil, don't chuck it. Um, again, uh, just some other bits as well as the snips. I do have pairs of pliers, so different types. And again, this is to kind of work with the wiring. So just to kind of, you know, sometimes you might be able to bend it quite how you want. Even though it is quite flexible, it just helps sometimes with getting loops and shapes and stuff. So a couple of different types of pairs of pliers, I just tend to use those. Um, and these are tools I already have, the snips and these I already have anyway. So really the only thing I've actually bought so far is the actual wire. Um, next, coming on to the actual clay. So uh, there's so many clays out there. There's some stuff called Sculpey, which is uh, widely used. And you know, there's quite a few kind of well-renowned YouTubers out there that use kind of Sculpey. There's also uh, the one I've picked, which is actually called Monster Clay. So this is the first time, really, uh, this is the first pack I've ever bought of this stuff. So I went for the kind of medium, I don't know if you can see there, the actual medium grade. So they do like a, they do a soft, medium and hard. People choose, uh, different sculptors choose different types for different reasons. Uh, I found the medium to be really, really good uh, as far as a kind of, a, you know, an entry level like I am kind of uh, trying to sculpt. Um, so you get, oh, let's have a look here. Uh, if it's gonna have to give me kind of any kind of sizes and stuff, it was probably on the top and I've logged that, so we'll scrap that bit. But um, basically, you have some, you have some clay. Uh, and what you do is with this clay, and it's good stuff, so it's quite hard, basically, when you start to use it, it's quite hard. Um, and only through either kind of plying it through your fingers and kind of moving it around and getting some heat into there, does it actually start to soften. Most people, um, and again, I don't think the actual manufacturer would recommend this, but most people and the channels that I've seen on YouTube and the videos I've watched do actually use it in the microwave. So basically take the lid off. It's just like a, a, like a film lid, peel that back. 
obviously don't put any metal objects in there uh, and just place the, the the tub of this just directly into the microwave uh, and basically I think I give it maybe a minute when it was full uh, and then I took it out and it had started to soften a bit and I think I put it in for like another 30 seconds and it had softened enough that I could then obviously start you know dragging bits out and working it and, and molding it um, but basically the, the stuff with this um, the, the kind of concept with this this monster clay is when it cools it obviously then goes hard again which is great um, quite a few people what they tend to do is they um, once they've done their final sculpt and they you know they're happy with it they will then like take a um, like a silicon mold of it uh, and then they will actually then once the mold set uh, they'll obviously uh, extract the actual sculpt that they did in clay and then they'll use uh, some kind of epoxy resin or different resins to kind of make a, an actual resin um, cast of that sculpt using the, using the actual mould. Um, what I do with mine, which is a bit different, um, so certainly with the first sculpt I did, again, this sculpt, um, is I, I actually painted the clay directly uh, and I'll come on to the products I use of that in a minute. So that's the clay, okay, Monster Clay. So you can pick it up from Amazon. I think Monster Clay, they probably have their own website anyway, but again, I think I paid, I think it was around 30, uh, 30 pounds, so that's in England, uh, for a tub of this. But I've done that that sculpt you saw earlier. Uh, it used roughly about half, and there was a lot of clay going into that sculpt. So it was about half of a tub. So to be fair, it does last. Um, so for that sculpt I did, it cost me 15 quid in clay. Uh, and countless hours of fun if you're into sculpting. So that's the clay, guys. Um, next, and I would say this is definitely something you need. So you can use your hands and your fingers and all the rest of it to sculpt, uh, and you will get on brilliantly, and it's good fun. However, for a what I think is quite a low price, you can pick up these kits, so something like this off Amazon. This one, I believe, was about £12, um, so it might be like $15, something like that. I'm not au okay fait with the kind of current exchange rates, but hazard a guess, $15, something like that. And um, I picked this one off, off Amazon again. It was just a package, and I think it had, oh, it had quite a lot of tools in it, but basically it's sculpting tools. So it's got different kind of rakes, uh, wooden tools. I'll show you some in a second, but a whole variety of different stuff that will give you different effects and kind of allow you to sculpt better. Um, you get sponge as well. So again, the thing with Monster Clay, it's not water-based. Um, so it's almost like a, I think it's like an oil-based um, kind of clay. So it basically, you don't want to put water anywhere near it, but this is more for kind of helping you get like different finishes with the clay. So you get a sponge in it. I've actually got my own toothbrushes. So this is an old toothbrush, but again, Sometimes it helps with dragging off some of the excess clay that you can't get off. So even I've got the kids' toothbrushes and it gives different kind of effects. So again, don't throw these things away because they can come in useful. So toothbrushes as well. Yeah, they're old, but hey, good for sculpting. So keep those as well. Okay, so we have different types of tools. Let me just empty this out so you can see. So we have, let's get rid of those. Right. So you get a nice little bag as well, keeps it all tidy, which is great. So you get the wooden tools, so like this. Uh, let's have a look. So these types, so different kind of points, almost like knife edge, so you can kind of carve, you can see I've been using these. Again, these for kind of like pressing in areas and stuff like that. This one's quite use useful actually for, for actually dragging out um, the actual monster clay out of the actual tub, believe it or not, because it can, you know, when you first get going, it can be quite tough until it softens up and you know you start using a bit more and when you warm it through in the microwave again it does soften so you don't need to imagine when you've used half of the actual tub you don't need to put it in for the microwave for as long and again you want to be really careful when you put it in the microwave because again it can get hot quite quick so just literally do 30 seconds take it out test it you know delicately you know if it still needs a bit more put it in for a little bit longer but maybe 10 seconds after that and just kind of see how you go you don't want to put it on for like two minutes, three minutes, because it'll start to bubble up and you'll have like, you know, scalding hot clay and you don't want that on your hands, obviously. So keep it safe, okay? But yeah, this is really good for dragging out the clay, okay? So they're the wooden tools, okay? You also get these, and these are, in my opinion, some of the tools I use the most. These different kind of spikes, I'd call them. I don't know what the actual correct terminology is, but you can see here on the ends of these, basically you have these lovely little uh, wooden posts and then in each one of these, there's different thickness kind of spikes. Okay, so like little balls on the end of these. 
There's one that's exceptionally fine there, you can see. Um, and these are so handy for basically sculpting different shapes and stuff. So with your sculpture, you might start off really rough, but when you get into the finer details of the sculpture, these are so handy to have, okay? Just for kind of getting in those deep kind of cracks, crevices that you might want, all right? So they're really handy. As well as that, there's some of the plastic kind of tools that we've got. So again, these are good for kind of pressing in maybe eye sockets and things like that. Again, we've got some spikes uh, here and different, this one's even almost got a barky kind of texture to it, which you could roll over the surface of something to give it kind of a bit of a texture. Um, again, a bit of a knife edge here. Uh, this one's actually good for kind of almost like coring out sections of clay. So again, just even these, just different kind of methods of, of, of adapting the clay, okay? Again, separately, so we've got these ones. These are actually silicon tipped. So these are all soft at the edges. And these are really good for basically doing, say, very soft lines. So it might be that you're wanting to put some kind of crow's feet on the side of, like, say you've done a bust, someone's face, someone's head. Um, you basically might want to put some kind of very soft kind of gentle lines in. These are perfect for that, okay? So again, different types, different styles, but very handy, okay? Then we come on to these. So again, very similar to the ones we saw earlier, the plastic ones, except these are metal. So again, just different, different types, different sizes, but again, very handy. And um, these are all in the same kit. So for the fact of like, say $15, let's say 10 quid, 10 pounds, you get a lot of variety of tools to do that. Um, this was just a brush I had anyway, so that'll go in the kind of brush section, but I'll keep it in there again. And, and this is what you can use on the clay to give you maybe some fine lines and things like that. Um, so again, brushes can be quite useful. Another tool that we had, and these can be quite useful, people use these, is to actually almost like rake off. So this is almost for taking clay off. So if you've maybe packed on quite a bit too much, these are really good for dragging the clay away. So you kind of almost like, almost sculpting it yourself, you know, taking the clay off. Um, people do actually make these themselves sometimes. So if you're good and you want to try making them, do it. Um, they use sometimes like guitar strings and then we'll actually fix those onto say a, a wooden post of some description. So different different size guitar strings are just as effective if you want to try having a go making these yourself. But again, this was just part of this pack. So and I've, I've used this, it's quite handy. But I will say, and this wasn't in the kit, the tool I used certainly on the sculpt you've seen in this video that I pointed to. Um, so the tool I used quite a lot for that one was this, and this is actually a, a dental uh, tool. So it is actually a dental surgeon's kind of tool. Um, so this is for basically plaque removal, um, and it's got it's twin edge, so it's got two edges, uh, two sides, and this was fantastic for clay. It was really good. Uh, and this was for some really, really high detailed work. Again, putting absolute, you know, 0.5 of a mil kind of lines into stuff and softening stuff and scraping stuff away and, and fetching out little bits that I needed to. This was invaluable. So if you can pick one of these up, they are very sharp, so you have to be careful. If you can pick one of these up offline as well, um, then certainly do. I think certainly here in the UK, these are actually called like a scaler or a descaler. So you are actually taking off the plaque off people's teeth in the, in the dental world. Um, any dentists out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, but yeah, that, that tool was fantastic. So I, I put that into my little kit as well. Um, so that's it for tools really. So again, not really a lot, 30 quid on clay, uh, again, a, a a couple of dollars on the wire and then the tools which are like say $15 or like 10 quid or something like that. Um, that's pretty much it with regards to tooling. Uh, other than that, um, as I say, I tend to try and find bits. So if I'm ever out for a walk with uh, the wife and kids, if I find things like this, I think, oh, that could be quite useful either for texture or even to include in the sculpture. I, I kind of collect things like that. Uh, again, maybe when I'm finalizing the sculpt and I'm maybe like putting extra detail in, uh, I've got like a tub of sand, um, so I might actually like lay some some kind of uh, adhesive down or for example, this is on top of the actual clay uh, or some glue or something and pour this on and again, paint it afterwards or leave it as it is. But sand, you know, that's quite a coarse grain sand. I've got that. So it's just using what you can. Um, when you've done your sculpt and you're happy with it, um, you, you sometimes have to soften it. Uh, and this was a bit of ex an experiment for me. So I did, to start off with, buy some uh, rubbing alcohol, 
And again, this was just offline. Uh, again, always play it safe with things like this because it is flammable. So please bear in mind that, you know, read the label, make sure you store it safely, keep it out of the way of kids. Um, but yeah, rubbing alcohol was kind of something that I'd seen online as people use to kind of soften down the edges sometimes of the clay because it can end up being quite kind of coarse. Um, so to kind of get a real smooth finish, say again, if you were doing someone's face, you'd want it quite smooth. Um, so I did buy some of this and try it. However, I will say uh, it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Um, you know, I was putting it on and putting it on and it didn't really do that much. So I still got it and I may still be able to use it here and there, but for me, it wasn't as effective as I wanted it to be. So, and again, trial and experimentation, I suppose. Other videos prompted me to use like lighter fluid, okay? Um, so again, bought this from like a, just, a, you, just a normal store, you know, like a home store. Um, again, flammable, do make sure you store it correctly and keep it out of the way of kids. Um, but this stuff was brilliant, I've got to say. So again, you need to, when you're using this, make sure you've got a, you know, I use a glass dish like this, um, just kind of squirt a bit in there. And then it was actually this brush I use and I would actually, in a, in a well-ventilated area, so doors wide open and windows wide open and make sure, you know, I wasn't directly leaning over it because again, the, the vapors of this are not particularly good for you. So I was making sure that obviously it was out of the way, you know, and I dab it, you know, the brush into the actual uh, lighter fluid. Uh, it will evaporate over time, but dabbed it in, painted it onto the actual, um, the sculpt in the areas that I wanted it to be and it smoothed it off beautifully, okay? So I would recommend this stuff, but again, just make sure you, you are safe read the kind of manufacturer's instructions as to kind of the safety measures you need to take. Um, but as I say, really good stuff. So I found that brilliant for the sculpting. Um, next, I've got things like this. So old yogurt pot, glass pots from like food stuff that I used to have. Keep these because again, fantastic for painting. Again, the lighter fluid in there. And again, this for painting or putting things in, keeping things in, just recycle stuff. Um, then, so when I do my sculpts and I've got it finalized and I've smoothed it all off and I'm happy with it, what a lot of people do, as I've already said, is they would take a mold. Um, I've not done that yet, but it's something I will actually like to try and do and I'll probably do it in a video at another point. Um, but for now, and again, I saw this on a YouTube video, I was looking around and I thought, what can I do? Uh, I couldn't afford, it was just a budget thing really, I couldn't afford to buy all the silicon, uh, to buy all the, uh, the resin kits and things like that because the, the actual sculpt I'd done was actually really big. It was a big sculpt, you know. I just thought, wow, I'm going to try this stuff out. I'm going to go mad. And I did a big sculpt. Um, in hindsight, I should have done a small sculpt and tried the casting first and had to go on a small sculpt. So when I do the casting, it will probably be a tiny sculpt. But on this big one, I'd done it. I'd finished the sculpt and I was like, brilliant. And I had originally thought I will do a, um, a cast and actually do, you know, a resin cast of it and a mould. Um, but when I started to price it up, it actually was running into quite a lot of money. So in the end, I started looking on YouTube for videos uh, to see if there was any method or way of actually painting the actual uh, clay directly. So the clay will actually stay in a quite kind of semi-solid state. It, it's hard, but if you were to press hard on it or bend it or move it, it would move. So it's not like a resin cast where it's absolutely rock hard and you just paint it. So that sculpt you saw earlier, uh, basically, that is actually still just plain old clay underneath on top of, you know, foil and wire. Um, but you can paint it. So there are other videos out there, so feel free to check them out. Um, but the way to paint it, and this is what I learned from one of those videos is, you start off with this, some of this stuff, and this is A. So it's a matte finish, uh, kind of protective clear varnish. It's like a clear varnish. So I picked this up again, just from a kind of a hardware store, um, a few pounds. Um, so what I did was actually went over, you know, the sculpture, probably about 30, 40 centimeters away, just kind of very kind of finely went over the sculpture, gave it a whole coat, let that dry, gave it a second coat, okay, in this stuff. So again, it's a matte clear varnish, okay? Um, so I went over it with that, and then uh, you're able to paint it, but you want to start off by giving it a base coat before you do the finished painting, okay? So the base coat I used was just a matte black spray paint, okay? And this is like a multi-purpose spray paint, so you can paint plastics, you can paint metals, you can paint wood, anything really brick. So this will cover a lot of stuff. So make sure it'll kind of cover plastics and things like that as well, but it's a fast drying, it doesn't crack. So again, as with the actual clear matte varnish, 
30 to 40 centimeters away, you know, go on the kind of manufacturer's recommendations, but held it, you know, this far away from kind of the actual, uh, from the actual sculpt. And again, just gave it a nice couple of coats, you know, made sure I covered all the areas that there weren't any kind of signs of the clay still showing through. So did a first coat, let that dry completely, uh, and then gave it a second coat to kind of make sure it was fully kind of, you know, covered and perfectly black all around, okay? So again, a few, this one's, one pound ninety nine. This was okay. Again, from a hardware store. So two pounds. You know, I don't know what that equates to in dollars. A couple of dollars, let's say. Okay. So that was it, and then we're ready to go. So the paints I actually use, and this goes back to me being a kid, is I actually use the Citadel miniature uh, paints. So I think they're like an acrylic paint. So you get these little paint pots from Citadel miniature, which is like a it's Warhammer. If anyone's ever been into Warhammer. I've certainly never played the game, but as a kid, uh, me and my brothers, we used to get the little kind of lead figurines and plastic figurines, and we used to spend hours painting them, which is kind of half the reason. That's another reason I'm into my creative side and love painting and things like that. But you can get these, you can pick them up for quite quite cheap, you know, a few pounds each. You can get, there's so many different types of acrylic paints out there. You can buy bigger pots from different suppliers. These are the, just the ones I use simply because they've got a good range of colors and things like that. So again, I've got like a, almost like, well, it's down here. I've got almost, it is actually like a fishing tackle box or a toolbox. Um, but I've got, as you can see, maybe in there, just a whole selection, not a massive selection. I've got what, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 13 different types. So 13 different colors. And that sculpture saw that I did, that was using probably only about six or seven colors. Uh, okay, so basically I keep them all in here. Uh, and as I say, um, they're the paints I use. So, you know, the way I, I paint, I suppose, is I apply kind of a base coat, uh, then I'll do like highlights, then I'll do some washes and things like that. Uh, then I'll, I'll go over again if I need to do any extra kind of dry bushing of highlights and things like that. This will all be covered, by the way, in some of the other kind of tutorials and videos where I am actually sculpting. So this is just to give you a kind of a broad overview. But uh, yeah, that's kind of how I paint. Um, and again, I just use a selection of different brushes that I've had from, these are from when I used to paint as a kid. So some really kind of quite fine ones, as you can see here, ranging through to some of the medium ones there and an even thicker one. So this I might use for the actual base colors. Uh, and then by the time I'm kind of finished, I might use like one of these two to actually do the finer works and things like that. But these are looking a bit tatty, so I may have to get some new ones before long. But again, as I say, you know, it's, it's all down to your budget and what you've got at the time. And as I say, these just work for now. So that's kind of it. Um, I mean, considering, you know, you can actually have a really good time doing some sculpting uh, and it doesn't have to cost too much money. If it's something you really have always thought, I'd like to give that a go, I'd love to be able to do that, just do it. You know, just literally get online. You will see that there are kits purpose made for people's beginners like I was doing who want to have a go at sculpting. So try a clay, and it doesn't have to be monster clay, it can be any, you can try some Sculpey or other different brands, there's loads out there. Um, so try your clay, have a look at what you want to do, and then just get some like uh, some sculpting tools and have a go. Have some fun, you know. Um, I've got to say, I, other than doing kind of wet clay, you know, uh, in school, um, I hadn't really looked at, you know, sculpture, but having watched a few online, I thought, I really have to try this, I've got to give it a go. And just having done one sculpture, it's now prompted me. I'm, I'm desperate to do more. So there will be more videos coming. This was literally just a bit of an intro into the kind of tools that I use. Uh, I hope it's been useful. As I say, uh, give me some comments or feedback. Um, and if you have a go, feel free to share what you've done. There's loads of groups out there. There's loads of, you know, Instagram kind of uh, pages on it. Um, there's certainly a lot of YouTube sculpt sculptors out there. And um, so check them out. Um, all with different styles and it's amazing to see the different types of styles that people do. Um, I feel I've got my own style um, but as I say if you like what you see please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to subscribe that'd be amazing too uh, but until the next video I hope you have a great day uh, and I'll see you soon. Take care guys. Bye. GoPro stop recording. Gabriel, okay, stop recording. Sculpture videos are the best. GoPro, okay, stop recording. Stop recording. GoPro, okay, stop recording. GoPro, okay, stop recording.
GoPro, stop recording. So guys, if you want to learn how to do something like this, okay, if you like the look of this, check out my next video and we shall work through it, okay? To be fair, I didn't take loads of video footage because at the time I didn't have a YouTube channel. I've got pictures, I'll do a voiceover, I'll do an intro, and you can see kind of how this kind of unfolded, okay? Check it out. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording.